You may be seated, please. Welcome, one. Welcome, all. Welcome, creatures, great and small. Ladies, gentlemen, girls and boys. It's time you find your lasting joy. Welcome, poor. Welcome, rich. It doesn't matter which is which. Hungry for some fine hors d'oeuvres? Mind you, it's first come, first serve. Welcome weak, welcome strong. You've come so far and you've, you've traveled long. In the day or in the night, here you'll find an endless light. Never fear, never dread, and come into this house of bread. Leave aside the world's allures and step into this open door. So welcome young, and welcome old, and welcome stories yet to unfold. Joy. Yes, there were many times in my life when I've experienced joy. The joy of playing with a new toy, the joy of growing up, the joy of building houses with Dad. But it wasn't until I met Mary for the first time that all our joys in life just seemed to fade away. Uh, hey, Mary. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Remember me? Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Um, well, uh, there's a feast coming up, and I was wondering, you know. Oh, oh close. Hey, brother. Joseph, hey, I wasn't you expecting you. you. Hey, oh, how's man, it going? It's been so long. Uh, what oh. brings you around? Well, you know. Been fishing at Capernaum and then decided to travel all the way here. But I tell you what, those camels, they stink. I'd rather have a donkey. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
What are you all smiles about? Oh, I mean, well, if you're asking. Um, Don't tell me. Someone gave you another dreidel. Uh, okay, that was a little lame, but um, no, yeah. it's not Are you that. finally finished uh, Mr. Eli's new house? Okay, well, next week we're planning to get it done. But listen, all on, I have to tell you something, okay? Yeah, it's pretty that? exciting news. I haven't even told mom or dad yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Sure. Yeah, yeah, okay. Listen, you got to promise that you got to keep this um, keep this quiet. But all right. I met, I met somebody the other day. Okay. Um, what's his name? His? No, 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 no. A, a girl. A girl? Yeah. A girl. Yes. Did you give her a dreidel? All right, okay, you know what? Enough of the dreidel. <laughs> uh, anyway, what's her name? Oh, well, her name is Mary. Uh, we met the other day, and oh, man, you should have seen her. She's so gorgeous. And we talked, and I think we really hit All it right, off. Joseph, there was a connection. Calm down, calm I down. think she's the one. Oh, man, what do Listen, I do? Let me give you some advice. First of all, you've got to be patient. Okay, patient. And that's where the joyride began for Mary and me. Soon we were betrothed. We were considered husband and wife in all religious and legal aspects. Except the formal home taking wasn't for another 12 months. I was obligated to wait and prepare for that joyous day when the marriage would be complete and I could take Mary in the home as my wife. But little did we know what would happen next. Hello, Elizabeth, you home? It's, it's Mary. Blessed art thou among all women, <sighs> and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. <sighs> and whence is it to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me, come, come sit. For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation was heard in mine ears, the babe in my womb leaped with joy. Cousin, do you know? Oh yes, I know all about it. After 400 years, the angels are singing again. And would you believe it? The angel Gabriel himself appeared unto my husband. Really? Well, what did he say? Poor Zacharias. He can't say a word. The angel zipped his lips. And now, I have to do all the talking. It's all right. I don't really mind anyways. <laughs> so what else did Gabriel tell you? Well, the angel Gabriel told me that I conceive, and I bear a son, and I call his name Jesus. Oh, what a beautiful name. The angel told us to name our child John. Oh. So what else did angel the angel tell you? Well, Gabriel said that Jesus would be great, and that he would be called Son of the Highest, and that God would give him the throne of David, and he would reign over us forever. Elizabeth. Tell me that doesn't sound like the Messiah. Oh, Mary, thou art blessed. No, Elizabeth, it's not about me, not at all. You see, my soul does magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. It's all about him. It's all about Jesus.
everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Honor. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the heart. Brother, hey, come on in. Uh, I'm just getting the house ready. The wedding's coming up. I'm super excited. I, man, I can't believe I'm going to marry the girl of my dreams, man. Uh, Joseph, uh, Joseph, I... listen. Hold on. Yeah, is everything okay? There's something I got to tell you. Come sit down. Uh, sure. It's about Mary. Is, is she okay? You're not going to believe this. Listen, I'm your brother, just, just tell me. Well, she was in Judea for about three months and news came around. I hate to break it to you, man. Mary's with child. <laughs> You're joking, right? No, no. No, listen, the, listen, Mary would never do that to me. I, there's gotta be some mistake, listen. I, I got some work I need to take care of. Listen, Joseph, it's true. But not a lot of people know. There's dad, there's mom, Mr. and Mrs. Eli, Elizabeth, Zacharias, but you know what? Soon Rabbi's gonna find out, and so is everyone else. Do you remember what they say in the synagogue? Do you remember the law? What about the law? Well, when these things happened, Moses commanded us to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. So you know what you need to do. Are you listening, Joseph? You've got to put her away. Joseph, can you hear me? You've got to put her away. Put her away! How can you tell me to do that? She's the love of my life! Listen, it's not me telling you to put her away. It's the law. You know what you need to do. God, why does this have to happen to me? Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, 
and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins.
good. Yeah. Oh. Hey, uh, just a second. Um, yeah, uh, just a second. Hey, listen, I just said, ah, uh, uh, oh, hey, sorry, uh, hey, oh, th thank you, uh, all right, bye now. Uh, Honey, what's, what's that? It's, uh, it's a letter. Yeah, well, what does it say? It says the whole world's being taxed. You look worried. Yeah, we have savings. Uh, no, Mary, it's not about the savings. Listen, it says here that in order for us to be taxed, uh, we have to go back to our birthplace, our town, our original home. For me, that's, well, I mean, for both of us, that's, uh, that's Bethlehem. Bethlehem. Well, where's Bethlehem? It's uh, it's about like a two weeks journey away, near your cousin's place, Elizabeth. You think baby Jesus will be able to travel that far? I don't know. But look at it this way: wherever Jesus is coming from, I really think Bethlehem's a walk in the park. But if we are going to make it to the tax taxing time, we gotta head out as soon as we can. So. Let's go see if your dad has a camel. A camel's fine, but I'm okay with a donkey. Okay. Or <laughs> you could carry me. <laughs> Wait, are you calling me a donkey? Well, you did <laughs> Well, you did say it'd be a walk in the park. <laughs> All right, let's just keep moving there. Let's all stand, let's sing, oh little time, oh little town of Bethlehem. Sing with me. Oh little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above the Oh, man. 
child of Bethlehem. Oh, holy child of Bethlehem, please send to us, we pray. Cast out our sin and enter in it. Be born in us today. We hear the Christmas day. Thank you. You must. You may be seated, please. There in the back. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for gracing me with your presence tonight at the Bethlehem Inn. It is our custom that every night we would look forward and embrace the coming Messiah. Many of you have heard of the prophet of old, Isaiah, who proclaimed and prophesied of the coming Messiah and said this, The Lord himself, God himself, shall give you a sign. Don't you just love it? Don't you just love how God, don't you just love how God would give a sign to his people? And here's the sign. Isaiah said this, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name. Excuse me, my friends. Someone's at the door. <sighs> Excuse me, sir. <sighs> yes, sir? Um, yeah, well, me and my wife, we've been traveling so long. We're just looking for a place to stay. Uh, we were wondering if there's any room in your inn. <laughs> sir, sir. We decide. No vacancy. But listen, listen, can't you see? My wife is pregnant. She could give birth any day now. We just need any place to stay. Uh, one, one, one more time, one more time, one more time. Sir, look, look. Mm, 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 mm. No, uh, uh, no vacancy. Oh, come on. Sir, read Hebrew. Shalom, my friend, and I'll see you later. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye. I can't believe this guy. Okay. Sorry about that, my friends. Strangers. <laughs> Let me lock the door. We don't want them coming in. It's packed in here. Anyway, oh yeah, where was I? Oh yes, God's sign to his people. Welcome one, welcome all. Welcome creatures great and small, don't be scared. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, girls and boys, it's time you find your lasting joy. Welcome poor, welcome rich. Doesn't matter which is which. Hungry for some fine hors d'oeuvres? Mind you, it's first come, first serve. Welcome weak, welcome strong. You've come so far and you've traveled long. In the day or in the night, here you'll find an endless light. Never fear, never dread. Come into this house of bread. Leave aside the world's lures and step into this open door. So welcome young and welcome old. I welcome stories yet to unfold. Welcome, welcome, come in, come oh, in. Yeah, uh, yeah. Come oh, in, awesome, you got the cold out Fantastic. there. Fantastic. Oh, um, all right, how's it going, guys? Uh, great. Pretty good, awesome. You must be the baby's parents. Oh, well, it's a little complicated, but wait, wait, wait. Let, back up, back up. How, how do you know I was the father? Well, my friend, can't you see the sign? Well, that is a baby, <laughs> right? Uh, okay, you do have a point. Listen. Um, we're looking for a place to stay. Um, do you have any room at all? I'm glad you asked. Uh, I noticed that you didn't have a sign. Perfect. Because we welcome people of all ages, stages, places, and races okay. of life. Hey, uh, yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, fantastic, cool, all power to you. Um, but really, we really need a place to yeah, stay. no problem, no problem. I'm just gonna, oh, ah. My manager didn't leave the script out here for me to look at, but. We will find a room for you. All right, let's see. Um, are you guys booked? No. We, oh. Oh, we are? Oh. Oh. Oh, oh no. 
I'm so sorry, but we're booked. Oh, hey, thanks so much anyway. No, 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 wait, don't go. Don't go. I think there might be a place for you guys. Follow me. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Back outside. I'm sorry you came. All right. Uh, hey, you want me to close this? Don't yeah. worry. It's, okay. it's a short walk down there. Watch your step. Mind the bushes. All right. <laughs> that was a long trek. I'm glad you guys made it. Oh, ooh. It's it's a cozy. All right, it's no four star hotel. Who am I kidding? <laughs> oh, but it's 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 all the room we got left right now, and I'm so <sighs> sorry, but this will have to do till the morning. Um, listen, why don't you guys come make yourself comfortable? I'll see if I can grab some blankets. See if I can get anything um, set up, like maybe um, some baklava if you guys want, uh, or a yeah. fresh Hey, toast. listen. Hey, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. I'm sorry. Shalom, guys. Have a good hey, night. Hey, shalom. Guess you're right, hon. This isn't going to be a walk in the park. Hey. At least someone was concerned enough to let us in. Yes. Lord, 
Jesus really be the Messiah? This babe, wrapped in these old swaddling clothes, could he really be our savior? I mean, this manger, this place. I wish we could give him more. Wow. This is all so humble, so lowly. There's shepherds from afar, they're coming this way. Change shall be great. 
you know, you know, in all reality, I don't understand how everyone around me could be so joyful. First of all, this baby Jesus is not my son. I mean, who's he going to call father? Well, God the Father, obviously. Then, who am I? And this whole situation, taxes, traveling, and now random people showing up, not what I expected. I bet that angel had no clue either. But how can everyone be so joyful in the midst of all of this? Joseph, you look worried. What's wrong? Uh, all right, hey, um, do you remember when I told you about that angel? Yeah, I'll never forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but remember what he said? He said, he shall save his people from their sins? What do you think he meant by that? He meant what he said? I, I believe he meant what he said. Yeah. That's it? <coughs> you believe he meant what he said? Yeah, I, I believe he meant what he said, and he said what he meant. That doesn't make any sense. Listen, okay, I'm, I'm here. I'm asking God for a sign. All of this, the shep these shepherds, these angels, this, I mean, listen, back in the Old Testament, Moses had uh, the burning bush. He had the plagues, and he had the signs to show him, hey, God was in this. And I'm, I'm just asking God, you know, God, just show me the signs. It's all confusing. I can't make any sense of it. I, I'm so stressed don't, out. Joseph, I just don't understand. Calm down as if... The angel of the Lord and the message of, from Gabriel wasn't enough? But, honey, that was just, that was just a dream. <sighs> Joseph, come here. Look into that manger and tell me if you're dreaming. You, you see, Joseph, it's not about seeing the sign. It's about seeing the truth. It's not about seeing the sign of his coming. This is his coming. It's not about believing the signs, Joseph. It's about believing the Savior. Now, do you believe, Joseph? Do you believe Jesus will save you? Yeah. <sighs> I believe now. Jesus is the source of true joy. Yeah. 
if I speak, I know He'll hear me, and to know that He is near me, always bring to me ten thousand joys, ten thousand joys, sweet Son of God, you came to me, and my heart sings. I know he came from God to save us from our sins And that he came to set his people free But how was I to know when Jesus came into my life That God's own son had come to bring to me Ten thousand joys Sweet son of God you came Yes, there are many times in my life when I have experienced joy. The joy of growing up, the joy of building a house with Dad, the joy of knowing Mary, my wife. But it wasn't until I believed that Jesus would save us from our sins did all other joys truly fade away. Where is your joy this Christmas season? Sit in the gifts, the shopping, the eating, the singing. Is your joy in your time around family and friends? Or is the true source of your joy in Jesus? So, just like that old innkeeper said, Ladies, gentlemen, girls and boys, it's time you find a lasting joy. Leave aside the world's allure, step inside the open door. Welcome young, welcome old, and welcome stories yet to unfold.
one more time, please, let's all stand. Let's sing that song. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Sing with me. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee. All right, appreciate so much the uh, cantata and you coming to be a part of that to watch it and trust it's been a blessing to you. Take your Bibles if you have one, please. Turn to Matthew chapter number one. Matthew chapter number one. And just give me a few minutes, I'll be done. All right, uh, it's been a long day for some of you, but it's the Lord's Day. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Matthew chapter number 1, and verse number 21 through verse number 23. Matthew chapter number 1, first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 1, verse number 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the, Lord, uh, of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted, it is God with us. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, again, we would ask you to bless the preaching of thy holy word. And Father, again, give understanding, uh, give uh, light, to where there is darkness, Lord God, that people might know and understand Jesus as their Savior. For it's in Christ's name I do pray, amen. I want to take these three verses and actually deal with uh, three thoughts real quickly. First of all, that we need to understand that what is said here has been prophesied throughout the Old Testament. The Bible tells us over and over again as we look through the Old Testament of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, coming into the world, uh, the Savior of the world. And we see that, again, uh, you can go through Isaiah, you can go th all the way through the Old Testament, prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. Folks, please understand that this is a supernatural book. There's no book like it in the world. This is God's record to mankind. This is God revealing himself and his truth to mankind, that God would desire for us to know him. And so he's given us his word. He's given us prophets to prophesy uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And the prophecy here is of the Savior coming into the world. And then secondly, we see that what this prophecy was, the Bible says that there shall be a virgin that shall conceive and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I want you to think about that for a moment. The interpretation of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the child of being born into the world. His name was Emmanuel, being interpreted God with us. That is an amazing statement if we stop to think about it. 
The Bible says this, and I often reflect upon this verse when I think what is said here. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Who am I that God would consider me? Who am I or who are you, if you don't mind, that God would come to be with us? That is an amazing thought. That God would care enough for you and for me. That God would be concerned so much about this world, about mankind. Again, please understand, the emphasis here is on mankind. All right? The only thing that God created after the image and likeness of God. Not the birds, not some cows, not some horses. Not some monkey. Amen? There's a little pun there if you didn't get it, all right? Evolution. Amen? No. God created man in the image and likeness of him. God breathed into the nostrils, man's nostrils, and, and gave him the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Amen? which distinguishes us different than any other God's creation. And here is now not only God creating man, but now we see God coming to be with man. Amen? Again, as we considered earlier today from Philippians chapter 2, that the Lord humbled himself, became lower than the angels, and took on the form of man for the purpose of going to Calvary's cross to die. For our sins. His name shall be called Emmanuel, which is being interpreted God with us. Holy, righteous, almighty God, our creator, became man to be with us, to identify with us. What a Savior. What a God. And then I want you to consider verse number 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. What was the purpose of Jesus' coming? There's only one purpose, and it's all about us, to save us from our sins. I'll give this some thought, folks. The Bible says again that God created man in the image and likeness of God. Adam was created without sin. Adam was created perfect. Until we come to Genesis chapter 3, where Adam willfully disobeyed the only one restriction that God gave him. At that point, Adam willfully sinned, willfully transgressed the law, broke the law. And from that point on, we have seen and witnessed the effect of sin throughout all of history. I am born into the world, not a child of God. Folks, I know there are people that are promoting that, but that is not scriptural. There's nothing true about that. And the fact of the matter is, if we'd just be honest with ourselves, we'd realize how foolish that thought is. I am born a sinner. You know, my parents never had to teach me how to do wrong. Did yours? No, I, I did that automatically. It was very natural. I have a human nature to sin to do contrary to God. And Jesus Christ came into the world to save me, to save mankind from our sin. The word save there has several meanings, but it has this thought, this, this understanding of deliverance and healing. To save us, to deliver us, from our sins, to heal us 
Not as a disease, folks. Sin isn't a disease, it's a choice. Amen? That we choose to do wrong. But the great creator, our savior, is also the great physician who is able to heal us from the sin that would cause people to spend eternity in hell. Thank God for deliverance. Thank God for our Savior. And thank God that He is the answer to my sin problem. Folks, I want you to consider where you are because I can't do that for you. I cannot see your heart. I cannot see where you are spiritually in your life. But let me say this, and please listen carefully to what I have to say. If you're here today and you've never been born again into God's family, and you may not even understand what I'm talking about, you may not understand what that means, if you've never understood your sin condition and have turned from, from your sin condition and turned to the Savior, turned to Jesus and only to Him, not Christ plus religious activity, not Christ plus your righteousness, not Christ plus church membership, not Christ plus baptism. Only Christ. And call upon Him and ask Him to save you and forgive you of your sins. Invite Him into your life as your Lord and Savior, the one that is able to save us from our sins, to deliver us, to heal us spiritually. If that has never taken place in your life, let me say this. And I may not have never met you before. I may not know anything about you. But I do know one thing that's very, very true. I know this for a fact. There's something missing in your very heart and soul. There's something missing. There's a void that you cannot fill. And you may have tried all the vices of this world, you may have tried to fill this happiness or joy or peace in your soul that is lacking. You may have tried to look here and there and everywhere else. But I'll guarantee you, if you're without Christ, there's a void. And absolutely nothing in this world will ever fill it. Nothing. Do I have your attention? I think so. Can I continue with this thought? If you're not saved and you're searching your heart right now and you know what I'm talking about, there's something missing, then why would you continue to look to the world for the answers? Why would you continue to look at the emptiness and the misery and the disappointment and the frustration that this world will offer you when the answer is Jesus. And he shall save his people from their sins. Let me encourage you today. Would you look to Christ, the author and finisher of our faith? I trust that you will turn to the Lord.